and we are live. How is everybody doing? Good morning. It is another live stream here on the channel. It's Andrew. It's Sunday, June 13th, 902 a.m. Pacific time. Good to see everybody. Hope you can hear me and see me okay. Hope everything is coming through. 1080p, 60 frames per second. Hope everybody has had a good week. I want to uh, welcome everybody again. Um, <clears throat> it's been an interesting week. I've been very busy. Obviously, I got a lot of new products coming in, so I've been behind. I apologize, uh, but I'm getting them out as uh, fast as possible. We got a few people in already in the live chat. Uh, remember to put it as live chat, not top chat. That's, this way, you'll get everything in real time. We got uh, Lethal Emperor. Good, good to see you, my friend. Good morning, uh, Ish Ishpreet. Good morning. Hello. How are you, Constantine? Hello, Roland Gore. Good evening, my friend. William. Good to see you. Looking forward to another great live stream. I'm certainly looking forward to this. And we got uh, Kadim once again. We got Doc Vision as usual. How are you, Doc? Uh, Julius is here, and we got Manuel. Uh, Anu Rag, we got a lot of great people already. I see we have 58 of you watching, um, and I see we already have 13 likes, so people get that like button, uh, hit it. Let's get this spread out over YouTube. I also want to get to 114,000 subscribers. Uh, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. A lot of great stuff on the way, so you don't want to miss out on it. Uh, memberships are open that help support the channel, and we also have Super Chats, which will, of course, bump you to the front of the line, have your question or comment heard first. And then, of course, you have Super Stickers as well. So this past week has been a pretty interesting week. Uh, I did release one video. I did that on Friday. I believe it was Friday, yeah. Oh, no, it was yesterday. I'm sorry. It was the Dell Latitude 7320 Detachable, a 2-in-1 Surface Pro 7 Plus competitor, and uh, looking good so far. And we got our first super chat from our good friend, Bradley Cochran. How are you, my friend? And let's get that music off. And Bradley, thank you for that $10 super chat. I really appreciate it. So um, as far as uh, that Dell, I really do like it. It's a really nice two-in-one. Uh, I like the keyboard on it. Uh, I do like a lot of the things they brought to the table, a 13-inch uh, display, which is very bright. They claim 500 nits. I got 492. Uh, performance was a little tempered. I think they wanted to keep it quiet for the business users. You don't hear the fan noise at pretty much at all. Uh, it's been pretty good. Battery life has been pretty good. I'm going to bring you that full review coming soon. I got another business laptop here in the studio, and you can see it here. This is the T14 from Lenovo, and it's their ThinkPad line, and I've been waiting for this. This is a Gen 2. Now, this is the Intel version. If you're all waiting for the, I believe there's also an AMD version. Uh, I'm not sure if they're releasing that yet. I know there's been a supply shortage, but at least we got this one in. Uh, I don't know much about it yet. I just received it uh, the other day, and I haven't had a chance to even really uh, look at it. So I figured, why not? Let's do it all together here in a live stream. I haven't done an unboxing in a while live. So there you go. Good to see Pavel. Morning to casually average. Uh, wanted to say thank you. Your review on the 2021 NV X360 helped my laptop hunt this year. Waiting for it to ship next month. Yeah, I, I'm, I wish it would ship sooner. I know a lot of you are really liking that laptop, and I am also. I think it's uh, one of the best this year. Bang, gr a really good bang for your buck. AMD processors are really looking good on that. Even though it's Zen 2, it's still very good. And I already I, I liked everything about it. I like the display. I like the design. Um, some may want the, the numpad. You can always go with the old body with the new chipset. There is an option there. That's always good. But some of you like the fact that now you have a more spread out keyboard. Uh, it is a very good laptop. So 65 of you watching already. And we're going to get to the unboxing in a moment. But again, if you didn't check out my Dell Latitude 7320 detachable uh, video, again, just go to my channel. It was my latest video, and I really I'm liking it so far. And if we have some time today, we'll talk. We'll look at it a little bit more. And I also want to do a comparison between that and the X12 detachable from Lenovo in their ThinkPad line, which I also like. And they both bring a little bit something different to the table. Same type of form factor. I do love the keyboard, I got to say, on that X12 detachable. You know that. ThinkPad keyboards, uh, to me, are some of the best in the business. So uh, I don't want to miss any more Super Chats. We already got one from Bradley. So thank you, Bradley, on that. 
So uh, if you're ready, if without further ado, let's just uh, move over to this camera and let's uh, let's unbox this thing. So this is the ThinkPad T14. Now, this, and by the way, the problem I had with the Dell is the same problem I have with this. These are expensive machines. Now this, I went over to the website, is over $2,000. I don't think that's gonna be staying like that uh, with uh, ThinkPads. They, Lenovo tends to run very good sales and we're running up on Father's Day. Maybe we'll get a sale on these things. Uh, I don't know if this has already been cut, but let's take a look. Oh, it's already been cut. I don't need to do that, but maybe for dram dramatic effect. And let's just open this bad boy up. I'm just going to take everything out here. Okay, so we got the laptop here. We got some documentation. We'll get to that. And let's take a look at the uh, power adapter. This is a 14 inch, of course. And this is a 65 watt USB-C power adapter. We've seen this before multiple times with Lenovo laptops, the ThinkPad laptops, again, USB-C. Uh, if you wanna take a look at it over here, you can see that it is um, 65 watts, as it says there. Uh, pretty compact, I would say pretty compact. And then, you, of course, you get your extension cord, and it's, it's right there, okay? And that's the power adapter. I'll, and, and again, I'll, I'll try to get to your comments in a moment. Let's just get through the unboxing. I've got other stuff from ThinkPads. If we have some time, maybe we can even unbox a couple of others. Uh, trying to get caught up. Again, some documentation in the plastic here. Uh, T14 Gen 2, uh, you know, warranty information, stuff like that. And then, of course, we got the unit itself. And let me just clear this off here, as there is a few things over there. Okay, so... Oh, this is nice. This is that typical ThinkPad black finish. Uh, not that heavy, not that light. It's sort of in between, but again, you're going to get a lot of ports on this. We'll take a look at it. Um, it I would say, and then we could take a look at the specs. Let me get that off. Let me get that for my own use here. So we're looking at, as far as weight, uh, it's a 1.47 kilograms or 3.23 pounds. So this is not the lightest 14, but again, X1 carbon, you'll go lighter. This is gonna give you more ports, I guess. Uh, and let's see if you can open up with one finger. Let's see if we can do it. Uh, not quite, not quite. Uh, and there it is. And let's get this shot going. If I can get it in focus here. It's taking a little bit of time. Maybe I have to fix that camera. Let me go back to this camera and let me get that one back in focus. Okay, that camera is giving me a little trouble today. It's giving gave me a little bit of trouble last week, but you can we'll get we'll use this camera for now. And of course, without a ThinkPad, you can see the top down shot here because the hinge is 180 degrees. It can go all the way flat, as you see there. Uh, let's go over the ports, and we're going to start off on the left side. Uh, let me zoom in. Intel, you're out. Uh, <laughs> a lot of people don't like Intel, I mean, lately. And I don't know why, because they really have done pretty good with some of the their new 11th gen stuff I have coming with the 8 series. So you may not want to ba bail on them just yet. Uh, there it is. So on the left side, you get your uh, USB-C power button, a uh, power port there. You get another Thunderbolt 4 port there. You get USB-A. And let me go through these ports. Let me see what they list these as. And uh, let me get to the ports. So you got two USB-A 3.2 Gen 1 ports, two Thunderbolt 4 ports on this, micro SD card reader, optional smart card reader. It's got a headphone jack, which you see here. You got an HDMI 2.0. On the other side, you'll have RJ45. Here's your micro SD card slot. Uh, really nice port selection so far. And then on this side, you have the RJ45. And you, oh, that's over here. And then the other USB-A port, Kensington Lock, 
optional smart card reader. There's also um, wireless WAN, which uses the QuickTel 4G Cat12 modem. That is optional. I don't believe I have it on my unit here. Um, you can see the keyboard up close here. Oh yeah, this is not now. Now, now I noticed in the X1 Carbon Gen 9, I noticed it a little bit more shallow. To me, it felt a little bit more shallow than previous generations. This is the typical ThinkPad, uh, gorgeous keyboard. And I'll try to get to your comments in just a moment here. I know you're making comments here, and I, I'm glad you like it, Gia. H45 is all right, H35. I'm going to have more to say on that soon. Good to see Jan Alexander. How are you, my friend? I think the top and bottom bezel look so dated for Gen 2. Business laptop, so keep that in mind. Uh, Supra is out. Okay, see you. Uh, I wanted to I wanted to jump, laugh out loud. Also, the 400-nit display was a bit tricky to find, but I think it's going to be worth it. I'm not really sure, Carol, which one you're talking Are you talking about this? Uh, because I, oh yeah, I think you're talking about the X360. All right, so let's, uh, let's try to boot this up and let me zoom out a little bit. Uh, you got your fingerprint scanner. I didn't see anything unusual so far on the keyboard. Looking really good. Great tactile feedback. Good key travel on that. Uh, really one of the best... Wow, really good keyboard. Uh, I'm very excited to use this. All right, let's bring this forward a little bit. Let's push the power button to see if it has any juice. I think it does. I don't know anything about the display. This has the Core i5 according to this, so we'll test that out. Um, again, there's a very short supply right now, so I'll, I'll take whatever Lenovo can give me at this point. Uh, let's see if I can get this in focus. I thought I had it. I don't know why it's giving me trouble. Anyway, let's go back to this camera and let me see if I can show it to you like this. Oh yeah, that's a bright display. It's a matte display. Now the bezels are kind of thick. I noticed that as well. Uh, it's a, let's get those specs. I think it's a 1080p display. Let's go to, actually let's go to the settings here. And we're looking at 1920 by 1080. So they stuck with a 16 to 9 aspect ratio here. I already mentioned the weight, doctor. It's, uh, I'll give it to you again. I think it's 3.23 pounds. It's not the lightest. And it's a 1.47 kilograms. Yes, uh, Duck Vision. That is ThinkPad goodness as far as that keyboard is concerned. Uh, let's zoom out a little bit. Uh, so far, great port selection. I got to say that. Uh, the display is looking really good. It's got some good viewing angles. I'm going to try to fix that camera. Let me turn it off and on. I'll be right back. That should be in focus now. All right. So we got lucky there. Uh, as you can see, it's a matte display. Like I said, I have a lot of lights here, and that's looking pretty good. Greetings to, from Venezuela, Victor La Rosa. Como estas, my friend? All right. Uh, there it is from the side viewing. Very nice IPS display. Very little glare. Hardly any reflections. Loving the display. Now, the bezels are thick, like, as I mentioned. A little bit dated, but that's okay. I mean, that's a business laptop. Um Typical ThinkPad build. It's got Dolby Atmos speakers. We're going to test those out uh, in my video coming up on that. Uh, let me connect it to the internet. So just give me a second. And let me uh, do that real quick as you get change cameras here. So I'm connecting to my Wi-Fi. Okay. And you can go back here. And it looks like the camera's working. That's good. Let's see. We've got a super chat from, or super sticker, I should say. And I don't know, is it Belgium? What is that? BGN. I don't know what kind of currency. That would be euros if, if you're Belgium. But anyway, super sticker from Aleko11. Thank you. Good morning from Mexico, Douglas McLaren Moreno. Como estas? Buen, buenos dias, my friend. Good morning from Guatemala. Same to you. Buenos dias, Alain. All right. Hi from Scotland. Let me put this. Uh... All 
Okay, there I am. I'm on the screen here. Uh, let's see what else. Bulgaria's here. Okay. All right. So I've got this connected. I'm not going to connect to Google because I have to use my security key. Uh, let me um, let me bring up the the specs here. Let me just uh, complete the setup on this. Actually, you know what? I can do it without syncing. Uh, let's bring this down and let's go to the system. And this is what they sent me. This is a 11th gen core i5 1145G7. I believe that's vSync uh, with uh, V Pro rather. Um, and this has 16 gigabytes of RAM. And we can open this up actually if I go get my toolkit. In fact, let me go do that now. Just give me a second while we while I go get my toolkit. Okay, so I got my toolkit here. You can see it here. My iFixit. It's a little pricey, but I, I do like it to open things up. Uh, thank you. I appreciate that. The Don <laughs> Everybody, Tallyho Tech in the house. How are you, my friend? Good to see you. For those of you who haven't checked out his channel, it's killer, especially for all the laptops, uh, gaming stuff. He is fantastic. Dell stuff in particular is really good. Uh, so check out Tally Ho Tech, who's in the house. I'm sure a lot of you already subscribed to him, but if you're not, I don't know what you're waiting for. Great resource right there. Thank you, Tally Ho. All right, let's, uh, let me shut this down. I don't want to open it up with it powered on. Okay, let's uh, reverse this. And it's going to be Phillips head screws, so let me just bear with me as I get organized here so they're usually pretty in, easy to open up uh they could find the right one let's try this one okay and they look like they're captive head captive phillips head screws which is great All right, those are loosened. Let's uh, try to pry this open. Let me see here. Let me use, let's try this tool. Give me a second. Trying to do, every, trying to do everything live here. Let me see, this is open. So this is gonna have to be maybe from the front, maybe? Hold on. want to break it i don't know how do you open this up is this because look at the hinges are there oh no this should open up like this hold on i just need to find the place to get it started here i may not be, be able to open this up <laughs> here here on my uh live stream because i'm not sure what the deal is here i know you can open this up i know that for a fact but I got to figure this one out and I don't want to do it. Oh no, you can't. You got to go from the front. Maybe. You know what? I'm not going to open this up now. Use a hammer. <laughs> Use a hammer. I'm not going to open it up. The reason I'm not going to open it up because I don't want to break it. Although it seems to open from this side. $2,000 laptop. I don't want to break it. And then Lenovo won't be happy with me all right i'm gonna i'm gonna reserve this for the video i'll get this open i'm not worried 
I just want to make sure I do it the right way. Uh, we'll tight. Let me tighten these up real quick. Sorry about that, folks. This is what happens when you try to do things live and doesn't always want to work out the way you want it to work out. But that's okay. I'll get it open. All right. Anyway, let's boot it up. Let's boot it back up and then we can maybe run a few benchmarks. And then I can take your questions and we can go on from there. Okay. Sorry about that. No opening this up today. That's okay, but I'm pretty sure you'll be able to upgrade the SSD. I don't know about the RAM. That's what I wanted to open it up. But it says it's on board, but there might be an open slot. I'm not really sure. So uh, we'll have to see. I, I will get this open, I promise. Uh, there we go. The missing screw? I don't know, casual average. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to break it. I'm not going to break it. I'm only, tally ho, I know I want to use a hammer, but I'm not. Uh, <laughs> Okay, and we, how many do we have watch? Oh, we have 93 watching. Well, we're losing them by the second, okay? All right, so not, not successful in terms of opening it up, but that's okay. We move on. All right, so the display is looking good. I'm going to measure that. Uh, let me actually go to my account here. Hold on. Let me put it back here. Let me, do, let me download Chrome. So once I do that, I can get all my stuff. I can benchmark this, so this way I can do it today. Um, so far, looking pretty zippy, but we haven't really done much. But bright display, I got to say that. I like it. So there you go. Let me take some of your questions. Chisels work well. <laughs> I'm not chiseling anything open. All right, so a little quiet on the, the chat front today, huh? Any questions, let me know. So like I said, this has, oh, and I didn't tell you this, this also has Wi-Fi 6 along with uh, Bluetooth 5.2 and optional, and I said this earlier, wireless WAN, QCATEL, 4G, LTE, CAT modem, CAT 12 modem, I should say. A uh, lot of ports on this galore, ports galore. So for those of you that are criticizing those that are not having ports, this is not the one to criticize. Uh, let me go back here, and I'm going to sign in. I'm not going to let you see that. Uh, I'll just go with this angle. Let me turn on the sink here. And we can go to this camera. That would be better. All right. You never know what happens live. So according to Brad, it seems that the specs, a bit expensive. Yes, it's very expensive right now, but the, take that for, you know, I, they do run a lot of sales, so you can't really go by the, look what happened with the X1 Carbon Gen 9, X1 Yoga Gen 6, Nano, all astronomical starting prices. I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't be worried about this going down very soon, okay? And again, supply issues may play into that as well. And I have to use my security code because I have two-factor authentic authentication so it all happens live here on the channel i don't have my key with me so i have to use my phone and let's uh, use uh actually let me use my phone for those of you that are not using two-factor authentication to protect your youtube channel you need to do it and i have it locked down with a system key and so forth it's going to be very hard for the hackers, so that is something I don't want to happen, so I'm trying the best I can to protect my channel here. All right, so here is the code. Let me put the code in. Okay, and next... And we are logged in to my account. All right, let me let that let that sync for a few minutes, and let me see how these speakers are, because I'm going to get something in a moment. I think. All right, now I'm going to. All right, folks. Thanks for installing VidIQ. Yeah, VidIQ. I don't want to play too much of this, but. 
Little tinny, little tinny, to be honest with you. A little tinny, cord- but I'll, I'll do more testing on that. Uh, it doesn't sound that it has, doesn't like, it doesn't feel like it has too much bass so far, but we'll see. Uh, according to William, I noticed on the Lenovo website, if you order a customized version of this PC, shipping dates can be delayed about four months. Not, not unexpected, uh, William. There is a shortage going on. There is a shortage. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Um, let's, uh, let's go here. Let me go to, let's try that. Let's measure the display. Let's see how that's going to be. So go to. So I got to get the data color. So I use um, Spider Elite 5 to measure the display. And this device will measure it. And we can take a look at that. Let me just download the software real quick. Let me go to your questions while we're doing that. Brad says, uh, Marshall's telling Brad, seems hard to get any deals lately. Lenovo's website always has inflated prices. Yeah, well, that that's, I believe, temporary. Let's, let's wait a couple of weeks and see what happens because that's what happened with the X1 Carbons, X1 Yoga Gen 6. Uh, Lenovo's website always has inflated prices, but normally has coupons and deals to bring those prices back in line. I agree, Marshall. Uh, any news about the X1 Extreme Gen 4? I have not heard anything yet. I have not heard anything just yet. Uh, hopefully, we'll, we'll get some news soon. Um, display aspect ratio is 16 to 9. So it's 16 to 9 aspect ratio. Let me install this software. Um, and while that's going to load in, let's go to the downloads here. So 16 to 9 aspect ratio. Kind of wish it was uh, 16 to 10. It's, it's, I heard that Lenovo, according to Golden Panda, I heard that Lenovo was working on shipping future laptops with Linux as an option, but it seems it's going to take a while. Yeah, I heard the same thing. Um, you can get Linux on these. I got to start putting Linux on these and showing you. I know a lot of you want to see that. I'm going to start doing that uh, as I put this in. As this is installing, let's get some more questions here. So getting back to the Lenovo, uh, the Extreme Gen 4 from the X1 line, I haven't heard anything yet. And once I do, I can't wait to get my hands on that because that's one of my favorite 15-inch laptops. Love the keyboard on that. Love the options on that. You can upgrade that pretty easily yourself. Um, hopefully, that will they'll improve their thermals. I'm anticipating with H-series processors, hopefully. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, I can't wait to get that into the studio. You know, I'll review that as soon as I get it. So while this is uh, downloading, let's uh, installing rather, I want to test to see this display metrics. And we're going to see how bright it gets, the color accuracy. Um, and I should plug it in. Just to get it maximum performance. I'll use I'll use this one. All right. Using a Dell charger for a, it's all, but it's 65 watts, so it should be good. Oh, we only got 53 likes and we have 110 watching. Hey, people, get that like button up. Please hit that like button. Let's get this spread out over YouTube. If you're not a member of this channel, that'll be great, but not necessary. But become a subscriber of the channel. I have a lot of great stuff coming on the way. Any news about the availability of the AMD Gen 2 shortage? I, I, I have not heard yet. This is the first out of the box for them with this. I, don't, I haven't even seen anybody. I might be the first one who's even looking at this right now. We just got it into the studio from Lenovo. Uh, again, chip shortage. We're in the midst of, and that's going to affect availability. I got to say, this keyboard is looking really, really good. Uh, touchpad seems very good as well. Uh, you got the obviously the track point, and that is working as you'd expect. You got a, a fingerprint scanner. Let me go over some of the other specs. Storm gray and black are the color options. We obviously have the black. Uh, Dolby Atmos speakers uh, didn't sound all that great so far. Battery is up to 10 and a half hours, 10.7 hours. I don't know the size of the battery yet. I will check that out. Uh, but they're claiming up to 10 and 10.7 hours. 
Uh, you can get this with up to a Core i7, a Lady 1185G7. Uh, it's got the integrated Iris XE. It's got integrated Iris XE graphics and the optional NVIDIA GeForce MX50 GPU. I don't believe this one has that. I think this has the uh, the integrated Iris XE graphics. In fact, let me check that out real quick. Let's go to the device manager and let's go to graphics. Display adapter is the XE graphics. Yes, it is the XE graphics. Uh, it's got a Hynix uh, 512 gigabyte SSD drive. Um, let's take a look at the task manager. I want to take a look at the RAM real quick, more details. And then we go to performance, memory. So it has uh, 16 gigabytes, uh, 11 of which are, are available. And it's using one of the two slots used. So that tells me there's an open slot. And I don't know if that means it's, I don't think it's running in dual channels, 3,200 RAM. So this is DDR4 3,200 and one of two slots. So dim. So I'm expecting maybe there's an open slot if I open this up. Of course, I couldn't open it up live because I need to figure out how to open it up. It's probably something pretty simple, but I don't want to waste your time. I will cover that in the, um, in the, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm sure it will play Minesweeper very well. Does it support pen? I don't see any pen support on this one. Now, as far as the options of the, the display, there is a touchscreen full HD display option that uh, obviously I don't have. I have the 14-inch low-powered. I believe this is the 400-nit display. So that means you can get this also, and it's also available as a full HD as well as a UHD, 3840 by 2160, Dolby Vision, anti-glare, HDR 400, 500 nit display. But I have, what they sent me was the full, I believe it's a full HD low powered display. So that could be good. It's supposed to get up to 400 nits. Um, and we're going to check that out right now. Let me log into the spider software here and I'm going to probably have to register it. Uh, let me plug it in. Okay. It's a really nice display so far. And let's go wide out a little bit wider on the angle here. Um, and let me put in the code. Okay, I got to put my special code in so nobody else can use my software. It's a bit, bit, a little, bit of a pain in the you know what. Um, FCD, FE. Okay, and I got to register it. This is another pain in the you know what. Let's take me one second. This keyboard is fantastic. Wow. Really, really good keyboard. All right, let's test out the display here. Let's uh, make sure the brightness is all the way up. So this is the software. Let me choose what I'm going to do. I'm going to do its display analysis. Uh, I'm going to go to the color gamut. I'm going to do the brightness and contrast, and I'll do the color accuracy. There are other tests that I do, but for this, for right now, let's just go with this. And let's begin the tests. Let me hit start. And then, of course, you got to place this over the screen like that. And then hit OK. And then let it do its magic. So while that's doing that, let me take a look at some questions. <laughs> Is Lenovo clearing its leftover chassis from five to six years back? Um, uh, it's a business laptop. I'm not going to kill them for that. Uh, it's a business laptop. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. And somebody's getting banned here. So somebody just got the boot by me. All right. I love banning people. How's the webcam on this laptop? We'll check that next. Let's, uh, let's get the display going here. And if, uh, let me put my super source here. We got all the cameras working right now. All right, let's start the, let me start this, start the test. And I'm supposed to put this to, hold on. 
Something, of course, something always goes wrong here. Begin the test, start the test. Okay. I'm not sure. Right, there we go. Should be going. Measurements in process. All right. All right. People, keep the language clean if you can, and uh, don't be a jerk. Okay. Yeah, I've been promising a studio tour for a while. <laughs> I've been promising for a while. I got this camera working also, just to let everybody know. I'm, I'm working on different angles. We got this one as well, and this is my, uh, and you can see here the A10 Mini. And then, of course, we can go to the Super Source. All right, so let me say okay, and then I have to bring the brightness to zero, so let me do that. I like to do it over on this. There we go. All right. All right. And I'm not sure. This always, of course, something always has to go wrong. Okay. Of course, something always has to give me glitches here. But here, I think I got it working. There we go. All right, let's go back to the questions. Any experience testing with Display Cal? No. Apologies if this has been answered. No, I don't have any experience with Display Cal. I use um, Data Colors Spider 5 Elite. That's what I use. And we'll get to the webcam, as I mentioned. All right, so Manuel's asking Is there any, um, any word on the Dell XPS 15s? And the answer is not yet, or the 17, not yet. As I have to bring it to 25% here. Okay. Okay. Hope I'm doing this right. Because this, of course, when you try to do things live, everything gets a little bit screwed up. Now I have to go to 50%. Okay. We measure that and almost done here yeah so the monitor is the dell and if you can see it here let me go to camera number two this is the dell u u i think it's the u38 widescreen monitor and we'll talk more about that very soon i've been promising a review on that i know that should we tend to we should we tend more should we tend more towards gaming laptops for better CPU performance or normal work laptops can do the job? Thanks for answering. It just depends. Some people like to use gaming laptops for their uh, needs, but, you know, of course, that depends on your personal preference or you want to get a business laptop like you have here, um, something like this uh, might do the job. So it's just a matter of there's no right or wrong answer. It's just a matter of what you prefer. Audio is not the greatest so far. I've noticed it's a little bit tinny. It does get loud, but again, not too much bass. But then again, business laptops, I don't have too much faith in. Uh, all right, man, I appreciate that. Bro is now pro. All right. Thank you for the compliment. I appreciate that. We have 123 watching, 79 likes. Let's get that one-to-one -one ratio that I want. Let's get more than, let's get to 100 people. Hit that like button. All right, so let's, uh, let's go to the, say okay, say okay. We'll get the numbers in a second. Now, keep in mind, I may not get the most accurate numbers only because this is a brightly lit studio. You're supposed to really do this in your normal lighting conditions that you'd be working in. So bear that in mind as we test this. This saves me some time. Why, why don't you review any Dell Inspiron laptops? And I'm a programmer. I'm planning to buy a laptop around 1,000. Which one's good to buy? Uh, there's so many out there. Uh, we can't even, that's a whole show in itself. Uh, as far as Inspiron, I wait on Dell. I have to wait on Dell to send me what they can send. And I haven't received anything from Dell as far as Inspiron. I just did the Latitude uh, 7320 detachable. I did the Dell XPS 13 OLED display. So just stay tuned. We got a lot of stuff coming. Uh, Ryzen 5 or Intel 5, it depends on if your graphics needs. That has been because of the Intel Iris Xe graphics have been very good. But if you want multi-core, obviously the Ryzen will do better. And I can't wait to get the Ryzen version of this uh, into the studio. So we're almost done with our display measurements. We'll give you that in a moment. 
Let me keep going. Thoughts on the keyboard? Well, the keyboard, I got to say, has been fantastic, and you can see it here. Uh, really, really comfortable keyboard. Excellent key travel. Good tactile feedback on it. It's a backlit keyboard. Uh, it's a, I believe it's also a spill-resistant keyboard. Let me check the... Um, the specs on that um, keyboard, I don't know if it is spill resistant like we do get on. Let me go to Control F here. So it can, it, it, I believe it might be, let me see here, hold on. I don't see it as being a spill. So it says uh, the T14 Gen 2 14 inch are tested against 12 military grade rate requirements 200 quality checks and show they run under from arctic wilderness dust deserts dust storms from zero gravity to spills and drops so they talk about spills and it's got a rating a military grade rating but i don't know as far as that is concerned all right we got our numbers here let's bring it up here and let me tell you what we got here and let's go to four all right so i'll read it out to you it has 95% sRGB, 71% Adobe RGB, 72% of the P3 uh, wide color gamut, and 66% NTSC. Brightness, I measured at 305.5. Now, I think it's going to be brighter than that. Uh, because of my lighting conditions here, is, um, it's not going to give the most accurate in brightness. I know that for a fact. It's probably closer to the 400 that they rate this as. But because of the studio lights, it affects that measurement so just keep that in mind but even at 305 you're fine but that's not i believe it's from looking at it i can tell it's closer to that really good black 0 2.7 excellent contrast 1140 to one good white points at 7600 k um let's go to the color accuracy 1.62 is very good uh that means it's a color accurate display and it's a good it's a good uh rating there so very good in terms of the metrics here, um, and I don't believe that 305 is correct. I think it's actually closer to 400. Again, I'll, I'll test it in the optimal conditions. Now, it is a 16 to 9 aspect ratio, which I would prefer a 16 to 10 on this laptop. Since it is a business laptop, that means you won't see as much, especially on a 14-inch laptop. We saw the move on the X1 Carbon Gen 9, and I really appreciated that. I was hoping we'd see it on the T14. That doesn't seem to be the case so far, of course. Uh, not this year, at least. And that there you go. How much in screen? So it's a 14-inch screen. Uh, I'm glad you're a big fan. Uh, Henderson, welcome. Even though you're late, we're looking at the Lenovo ThinkPad T14 Gen 2. Price point is expensive. Let's uh, let's go over the price point real quick. Starting price of 2480, 21, no, web price of 2113. But if you customize it, and that only has eight gigabytes of RAM, but if you customize it, uh, it can go up from there. So um, that that might not be the most optimal. Let me try to bring this onto the display here. Let me go to screen share. And as you can see here, hopefully you can read that. Let me zoom in. So it starts 2113, right? And then if I add, let's go to Core i7, let's say 1165 G7, that added uh, some more to the price. You're up to 2307 uh windows 10 pro let's keep it at home we don't necessarily need to go to pro because we can get that cheaper as i mentioned other other ways to do that we don't need office right now let's go to 16 gigabytes of ram that brings that to another uh 2456 now and then if i go to uh let's do 16 gigabytes of ram it could go up to 32 that's good but let's go 16 just for the argument's sake and that brings that now to 2754. And then I want, let's say 512 gigabyte SSD. We don't even need to go to a terabyte because we could always upgrade that ourselves. 2918. So we're almost at $3,000 already. Color is black. You can change that to the storm gray, but let's keep it at black. It's a 720p webcam. Now, integrated Iris XE graphics. You can add in an MX450. That would be another $30. Don't know if it's necessarily worth it, to be honest. Okay. And then um, let's see what else. Display. Let's go with uh, the 
the touchscreen full HD. We don't necessarily need a 4K display. 3246, so a very, very expensive proposition. Graphics card we already did. Um, you can do the anti-microbial -micro treatment. Let's just keep it the way it is. Right now, there's no fingerprint reader, uh, but you can add a fingerprint reader. So if you have to go with the micro whatever, it's $15. Uh, wireless is included 4g is included with this price so this does have uh 4g oh no it's not included unless you go with the um it's only available it's not available on the gray models with 720p full hd low power displays or so you have to go i think with the 4k maybe that's a little bit weird three cell 50 watt hour battery okay so Really, you're looking at over $3,200, almost $3,300, all said and done. Um, and that is a lot. That is a lot. So uh, not cheap, not cheap. But, you know, people like this form factor, and they're going to want the upgradability on it, and they're going to want all that stuff. Yeah, not cheap. Yeah, a lot of companies buy this in bulk, as I mentioned. Like a lot of these business laptops, they do get discounts. So there you go. I would love to review the M16 gaming laptop. Uh, Asus doesn't just, they don't send me that stuff. I don't know why. I mean, I, I maybe I'm not big enough for them. I don't know. They send me other stuff, but not that. One could, And this is a good point by William. One could buy the two HP Spectres uh, for the price of this one. Yeah. I mean, you got to understand who this is geared towards. Now, 4G LTE is important to a lot of business users, especially when they're on the go. So that is something that needs to be taken into consideration. Companies, again, buy these in, these in bulk. They want to be able to service them easily. And there you go. Battery life, I don't know. It's got a 50-watt-hour battery, and they're claiming 10.7 hours. I just got it, unboxed it, so I don't know what more to say. Uh there are some cheaper things. I got a cheaper ThinkPad here. I got the, let me see what else I have here. Just give me a second. Well, I got something probably is even more expensive. I've got the ThinkPad P14S Gen 2. That's a workstation. That, okay, I've got, um, let's go to this camera. I've got, the L13 Yoga Gen 2, that'll have pen support. We can unbox it if you want. And I've got the E14 Gen 2. I think this is a real budget one. This will be a cheaper one if you those are looking. So I don't know if you want me to unbox them now, but I got my work cut out for me. I spit out my tuna at the price. <laughs> 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 oh boy you're funny curtis um the prices are inflated right now that's all i'm gonna say you know look we, we're in a shortage we're in a you know we're coming out of the pandemic which has sparked a lot of shortages the prices have gone up as a result um so we are in the midst of a uh a a problem with chips right they're they're hard to get and therefore these are hard to get and they're gonna supply and demand dictates the price you like that right aleko <laughs> uh which display do you have on the t14 um i would have to check uh i'll find out i don't know who the display where would i find that is that on the um who makes it i don't know we'll find out when can we expect gpus restocked again that's the, the million-dollar question, right? Uh, we don't know. We don't know. I don't believe it has a GPS sensor. I don't believe so. I have my, uh, my Lenovo mug, of course, to, in commemoration of this, uh, of this uh, ThinkPad. All right. So that's the, well, you know, we could run some benchmarks on it, but it's the Core i5-1145. Uh, uh, we can run some more benchmarks if you want. I carry an external hotspot, which gives me the capability of using virtually on any laptop. Yeah, that's, uh, but it, I, I'm the same way, you know, but there's something to be said of having it just already there, ready to rock. You don't have to deal with, 
having to take that out, turn it on, connect it. It's, it's pretty seamless, but uh, just there's something convenient about that, uh, having it built in. That's just me. But again, that's a first world problem, right? Uh, I hope they sent rum with that. <laughs> uh, do you think... Do you think waiting for Windows 11 is smart for should we buy one with Windows 10? You're going to get the upgrade to 11, so don't wait. That's going to be an upgrade. They're going to push out an upgrade just like they push out all the up other upgrades. It's, you're not going to – right now, there is no Windows 11. They're going to announce that in, what, next week or so or, or the week after? Um, I think it was the 23rd or 24th. Um, so you don't have to do anything. They're just going to push that out to all the units. So don't. That shouldn't be uh, a reason for you not to buy right now. That's for sure. Because whatever you get is going to run Windows 11, presumably, right? So uh, I've seen a lot of OEM laptop manufacturers implement some cooling method on both the i7 and i5 chip. It automatically cuts down the extra performance, uh, which you can get in the i7 chip. Yeah, I, we've seen a few. Of, we've seen that happen, right? Uh, last couple of laptops have been tempered down to get better uh, cooling. Um, $3,300. Mucho dinero. Yes. <laughs> yes, it is mucho dinero. But it's not a consumer-based product. So remember, if you're a company buying this stuff, you're buying it for your fleet or whatever, you're not thinking about the price. You're thinking about what it offers. Chip shortage obviously plays into that. And then these prices are artificial. That means they're going to go down with sales, coupons. Lenovo's famous for that. It's sad to see, according to Emmanuel, how most non-surface two-in-one detachable keyboard ultrabooks are only dedicated to the enterprise market. Uh, there's a use in the vertical market for them. We could take a look at, let me take a, let me bring this, let me put this down for now. Let's take a look. Let me bring on the Dell. Give me a second. Give me a second. All right. So, and we can move this out of the way. All right. So we saw this. This is the Dell. It's a little bit dirty there. So this is the, and let me clean this. This is the Dell Latitude 7320 I just reviewed, a two-in-one detachable. And let's get that first booted up here, and then we can see it a little bit better on that camera. because That camera is a little bit finicky today. Super bright display. There we go. And as you can see here, uh, a little bit glossy, but a beautiful display nonetheless. Um, you got the keyboard cover and you got the pen here. And now this pen, which you can see here, is like a carpenter's pen and very similar to the Surface Pro X that we took a look at. Um, okay, we got to start watching the language people. So you're going to get... I had to ban somebody because we're going to try to keep the language pretty pretty straightforward and clean. Uh, again, this is the pen, uh, Wacom AES technology, and it stores and charges in the keyboard cover. The keyboard cover does go up on an angle like you see here, like a Surface device. Uh, and you can see it here. Uh, you can see that all-metal two-tone device there. Um so here's the thing with this. Very expensive. Once again, I saw ridiculous pricing on this, and a lot of people criticized it for the pricing. Again, that pricing is artificial right now. I would imagine this is all going to come down once they sort out supply issues. That's my thinking on that. Does the pen have buttons? Yes, it does. Let's take a look at the pen. So there are buttons on, there's a rocker on this. I don't know if you can see that. You probably can't see it there, but there is a, a on the middle there. You can sort of see it. Uh, definitely has buttons on it. Now, asking me to have you subscribe to somebody else's channel is kind of like not a good move. So I'm not going to ask anybody to subscribe. People want to subscribe. They're going to subscribe. I'm not going to. I've never been to your channel, so I, I don't want to recommend something. I never. In fact, you're banned for 
um, spamming the chat. Uh, concept D, right? So I did the concept, what did I do? The Acer Concept D, I did the, uh, with the easel mode and, and all that, the pull forward design. So check that out. It's on my channel, uh, Hamnef. I liked it a lot. Uh, hi, Grendel, good to see you. Now, according to Emmanuel, uh, sadly, uh, Microsoft hasn't refreshed neither the design nor the nor the hardware of the Surface Book 3, which I think is the only detachable with discrete graphics. You're probably right on that. Um, so, yeah, it would be nice if they did that. Uh, I'm not sure why they haven't. And this is all four shots we got there, right there. Can you do gaming on it? On this, uh, not a great gaming laptop, these two-in-ones. Again, they, they temper the performance down to get that quiet fan noise. There's very little fan noise. I might do something very soon. Stay tuned. One, we got 126 watching, 102 likes. Let's, let's get that like button, people. Let's hit that like button so we can get this spread out over YouTube. Should I wait for the MX1 MacBook or buy the M1? Uh, if you need it now, buy it now or wait till the fall when we're expecting that M1X. But who knows? We thought we were going to see hardware this past week and we didn't. It was a rather lackluster uh, Apple event in my opinion. Uh, what do you prefer to use? A pen which has a rechargeable or a trackpad with a pen that doesn't have to recharge? I like the pen. I like having the feel of a, na a natural pen here. Um, I definitely prefer that, uh, for writing, for taking notes and stuff like that. That is to me a more natural experience than, than the trackpad it way to go. Hey, you doing frat? All right. We're now at an hour, almost 59 minutes. Don't know how much longer we're going to go on this. So I will um, do more on the T14. I will uh, open it up, figure out how to get it open, <laughs> and then I will uh, bring you my uh, first video on that. Probably going to do a, just a review video on that. I don't think I'm going to do an unboxing since we just did it now. Uh, I will do just my straight review video on that. I got the Gen 6, the Yoga 6... Um, the X1 Yoga Gen 6 review coming out. I'm finished with that. I got Samsung just about finished as well with the uh, the Samsung Galaxy Book X360, uh, Pro 360, I should say. And then I got another one. I can't remember off the top of my head. There's just so many. Pen as an artist is a must. I agree, Michael. That is a that's If you're an artist, you're going to want to use a pen like you see on here. Keyboard cover is very good. Now, this is like a like a a, a a soft coating on it. It's like a nice grip on it, like almost like a rubber grip. Uh, it is plastic, I believe. It's not like Alcantara. And this part, and this part is also got that soft grip, which means it has a pretty decent grip. You're not going to lose it uh, pretty good. And I can do better than that. I can use this uh, sound effect. Coming up. I think it's that one. Hold on. Let me put my headphone on for a minute. Coming up. Yep, that's the one. <laughs> that is the one. All right. Coming up. All right. Uh, which laptop would you recommend for a gaming plus a pen? Uh, I would look at, which does have pen support, is actually the uh, ThinkPad X1 Extreme Gen 3. It does have pen support, and it does, if you get the one with the touch screen, and you could game on it because of the discrete GPU. So I would go with that. You like that, huh, Hassan? All right. Haswan, I don't know how to say your name, but I'm probably butchering it. Swan, maybe? I don't know. How do you like the keyboard? Um, I like it, but I like the one on the X12 detachable. Let me bring that onto the, the stream right now. Hold on. So this keyboard I like a lot. And if I can find out which part to open, there we go. So, so on the left is the X12 detachable. 
And it's a smaller display with thicker bezels. And on the right is, of course, the Dell. Let me see if I can get this camera working in focus. It's just slow today. Let's uh, go back to this one for now so I can get that one working. Uh, keyboard on this is fantastic. Now, you'll notice that this has uh, thicker bezels. Let me see if I can get this camera in focus. Somehow, it's, it's just not cooperating today. There we go. So these are the two side by side, and you can notice that the glare on that a little bit. Uh, let me know what you think about it. So I, I like this display better because of the thinner bezels. It's also a very bright display. This is bright in its own right, but this has thicker bezels. Um, this has, let me put that up on an angle like that one. Uh, Keyboard, I prefer this one. I like the keyboard on the uh, ThinkPad a little bit more, a little bit more rigid, a little bit more sturdy. Yeah, I got to try that. I just haven't had time. Besides Apple, are there any recommendations for fanless notebooks? Can we perhaps expect models here in the future? Well, I just took a look at one that was fanless. That was the uh, Windows and ARM-based um, HP Elite Folio that has no fan in it. But the performance is not going to be as good. The performance not as good as the M1s, so you know. But it brings other things to the table, that other thing, the things that you can't get on the Mac. So that might be one thing to definitely consider. All right. 146, 109 likes. That's just too low. We need to get that like button up. Come on. Okay. I appreciate that, Antonius. Antonius, thank you. Always got gl glad to have new subscribers. The pen doesn't have Bluetooth. It, I think it might. I haven't tested that yet. Uh, I think it might have Bluetooth. I'll double check, but I'm not sure. I'll double check that. Is there any strategy which AMD implements similar to Intel Evo? I'm not aware of any strategy. So here's the thing about that with the Intel Evo. Uh, they, I like this uh, Evo platform because what they're doing is they're giving you a set group of standards that each OEM has to meet to make the, to make the laptop experience better for an ultra portable. So you have to have a certain minimum amount of uh, battery life. It has to have a certain type of display. It has to have certain features. It has to have Thunderbolt support. These are things that you can't get on an AMD laptop, unfortunately, and I wish it did. Believe me, I wish it did. But Thunderbolt 4 is an important feature to have to me, uh, especially when you're running multiple monitors, when you're running uh, eGPUs and stuff like that. That is not to be underestimated. That's for sure. So I don't. I'm not aware of anything that AMD is using to counter um, the Intel Evo platform. That being said, uh, I think AMD has done some amazing stuff with their chipset. They're a smaller chipset. Uh, it's smaller nanometer. I think it's was that seven nanometer, and we're still on ten with Intel. So. In a lot of ways, the multi-core performance, of course, on those AMDs are fantastic, uh, but we're not seeing the same out of the, the Intel. But where the A Intel is really excelling on their Ultrabooks is the Intel Iris Xe graphics. So if you want better graphics performance, then the um, the Tiger Lake is, is winning in that regard so far. So, But again, there's so many moving factors. There's so many things to consider before making that decision. Uh, yeah, that was in the beginning, Blazing Heart. Most of this live stream was uh, the T14, so check out the replay on that. Um, is the Huawei MateBook D15 good for gaming? I haven't tested it, uh, uh, so I can't give you my opinion on that, but from the specs-wise, probably. Where's that monitor video? <laughs> it's coming. And they're asking me, I'm sure they're wondering where it is as well. It's coming, Jeff, please. Don't put any more pressure on me. <laughs> All right. Okay. But it is a great monitor. This is the monitor right here. 
Look how wide it is and curved. It's really nice, actually. Um, I, I, I rotate them. I rotate them. For video editing, I'm using a MacBook Pro 16 uh, from 2019. <laughs> Stop it, Jeff. I, I don't want to get any more hot water. I, I need them to send me products, and I'm just one person, which, be, which by the way, brings me to uh, an update. I, I'm... I've met with a couple of people. I'm, I'm hiring at least one or two video editors to help me uh, move this stuff quicker because I can't shoot, do everything, shoot, edit, everything myself, and then um, get it out as fast as I want to uh, without sacrificing quality and so forth. So I'm bringing on probably one, maybe two employees. I, I think I have one already pretty much secured, and then it'll be a second person and I'll talk more about that to help me edit these videos because uh, I am totally inundated at this point and I just want to catch up. But I don't want to sacrifice quality of my videos just to for the sake of just pumping them out because then the channel will suffer, so I don't want to do that. I know, I know, Jeff. Uh, I have I have to run. All right, William, take care. Enjoy the cool weather. I yeah, it's anything but cool here as we're under a, a heat advisory once again. We're gonna get to over 110 this week. It's not even summertime yet. Take care, William. Good to see you. Uh, I didn't. Did you do the Asus? I haven't done the Zephyrus 16. I would love to. Asus, if you're watching, I'm waiting. Which laptop? Again, I talked about that a little bit. So a lot of stuff coming up, people uh on the channel is there any other questions before we start to call it a day i'm gonna it's so hot in las vegas i'm just gonna jump in my pool just to cool off um you're an engine hamanth is an engineering graduate in 2020 congratulations uh from information technology ready for you sir great all right that's good to know i'll keep you in mind uh but congratulations and that is a good field to be in that's for sure which side do you take either intel relatively poor engineer chip or can you buy uh but you can you buy and amd super engineer chips but you can't buy them so that there is the conundrum i am chip agnostic i'm platform agnostic whether it be apple versus windows or uh, intel versus amd versus apple i use what is the best um, tool for the job at hand. So if it means using a Mac, which I'm using here, as you can see here, then I use a Mac. If it means using uh, a Windows PC, then it means using a Windows PC, like a detachable on the go, where you have all these sorts of things, these features that you necess can't necessarily get on a Mac, like 4G or 5G or even uh, detachable keyboards, pen support, touch display. So it just depends. Now, as far as AMD, I love a, you know, those are my name. That's my initials, AMD, but uh, you can't get them. You can't get them right now. It's the problem is there's no stock. So that of course is a problem. And then of course, Intel uh, has playing catch up in, in some ways, but in some ways they've exceeded with, with those integrated Iris XE graphics. So it's just a matter of, um, the situation we find ourselves in with a chip shortage compounding the problem. So uh, there you go. So send some some of that heat east. Oh, I'd love to. I'd love to because this is brutal. This is brutal. Uh, I appreciate that stereotype 0815. Wonderful channel. I appreciate that. Thank you very much for your efforts and for answering the many questions. Keep it up. Do you think that the Galaxy Book Pro can compare with any of the Lenovo's or Spectre X360s? So I have my full review on that pretty much ready to go. I just got to make a few tweaks here and there. Uh, I've used it for about a month, and I got to say I like it. There are some shortcomings you'll hear about in the video. I think you know a little bit of what I already talked about in past live streams and in that video as well. Uh, a couple of things, a 16 to 9 is not... Uh, not preferable to me at this point. The display should be brighter, among some other issues, but there are some great features on it, and I'll talk more about that in that full review. But as far as comparing that to the Spectre X360 or the Lenovo, uh, say, Yoga, Yoga Gen 6, for instance, or something like that, um, it's not as good. I'm going to tell you that... I, I love Samsung, believe me, you know I do, but I don't think they're as good. And I'll talk more about that in the uh, full review of the Samsung. 
Acer laptop business are lame. I don't know. I've reviewed some good Acer laptops and I like them. Uh, so I don't know if we can make a blanket statement like that. I'm a big fan from Taiwan. I'm glad you love my channel and I appreciate that. Thank you. All right. And with that, we're out at an hour and 12 minutes. I think we're going to wrap it up, ladies and gentlemen. I would appreciate everybody. I want to thank the moderators for doing such a great job today on the channel, moderating. I had to boot a few people, but that's always uh, par for the course here, as when you do a live stream, opening it up to everybody, opening it up to the world, you're going to have your haters and detractors. But the bottom line is, most everybody has been fantastic. Great live stream people. I want to thank you so much. And... Um, I want to take a, and I know Duck Vision's telling us he got his first look at the Samsung uh, Pro at Best Buy, not impressed at all. I will talk more about that in that full review. But until next time, everybody, I will see you in the next video. I got a lot of stuff coming up, so you want to make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure that notification bell is checked off. So until next time, this is Andrew. I will see you in the next video.